today in Widow's Astro Forum. Hi folks, welcome back to the channel. I always thought it was very romantic to manually focus your telescope and rotate your camera under the stars to get that perfect picture of objects in deep space. But now CWO has released this electronic rotator. I couldn't resist. It's actually called Camera Angle Adjuster. So in this video, I'm going to show you my attempt to install this rotator on my telescope to further automate my astrophotography routine. I'm Vito Ullemans, and you are watching... Uh, um, huh? Vito. Vito. Hey, Seastar S30. Vito, did you know that that rotator costs almost as much as me? And I can image the night sky all by myself. Yeah, I know, I know, but I'm just trying to automate my astrophotography rig over there. Oh, but I have a framing mode, a mosaic mode, and automatic focusing on board, and I can image the sky within five minutes when you use the Seastar app. I know, I know. Here we go again. Anyway, let's get started. He never learns. Setting up the electronic rotator, or as a ZWO calls it, the camera angle adjuster, is really simple. Rotator comes as a single piece of hardware with clear arrows indicating which end should connect the telescope and camera. Installing it on my refractor was very easy. I just rotated the rotator, yes, pun intended, until it was securely attached to the telescope. The rotator features a large M54 opening which perfectly fits large cameras like the ASI 2600MC Air I reviewed in a previous video. Most cameras have a smaller diameter, so for those you would need an M54 to M48 adapter, which may also be your field flattener or in my case an adapter at my filter wheel. The rotator promises a positioning accuracy of 0.02 degrees, and while it is compact and lightweight, it can carry up to 5 kilograms or about 11 pounds of payload. It rotates at 7.5 degrees per second, meaning it takes about 48 seconds for the rotator to complete a full circle. Look what I found in my closet. <laughs> it's the electronic autofocuser. I think I have the focuser for over a year now, but I never got around to installing it on one of my telescopes. So I might as well give it a go with this telescope to try and make this telescope fully automated. Let's go. So for the EAF, I first removed the course adjustment knob of the telescope with the included wrench. Next, I tested which of the four flexible grey couplings best fitted my telescope and put that one on the telescope focuser shaft and tightened the lock screw. I then attached the focuser body to the flexible coupling and tightened the lock screws with the same wrench. Next, I attached the bracket to the focuser and I fixed it to the body of the EAF with the screws. After I was happy with the fitting, I made sure all the screws were tightened. And this is probably a good moment to tell you that the links to reliable telescope shops across the USA and the EU that sell the rotator and the electronic autofocuser can be found in the video description below. So far so good. With all these extra devices, I decided to go with my ASI Air Plus and the ASI 2600MC Pro to test the rotator and the EAF. I connected the rotator via the USB-C cable to my ASI Air Plus and clicked the new CAA icon that became available in the ASI Air app after running the latest firmware update. For all NINA enthusiasts out there, ZWO also released an ASCOM driver to control the rotator. Sorry, I should say camera angle adjuster. After clicking on the CAA icon in the ASI Air app, I received a warning that essentially advised me to check whether or not my guide camera rotates with the camera angle adjuster. If you have a separate guide scope, the answer is no. However, if you use an off-axis guider or a ZWO dual sensor camera, your guide camera will rotate when you adjust the rotator. So for dual cameras like the ASI 2600 MC Duo or MC Air, you should enable the Data Rotates with CAA option. If you have an off-axis guider placed behind the rotator, 
you should probably also enable calibration data reverse rotation. I tested the camera angle adjuster in the app by adjusting the dial under control and by tapping rotate. The rotator moved to its new position, which was a good sign. Uh, here you are again. Did you manage to get that rotator going? <laughs> hey, C-Star S30. Yes, I even added an extra electronic autofocuser to fully automate my astrophotography rig. So, what object are you going to capture tonight? Well, actually, I'm trying to capture the Orion Nebula again tonight because I already captured it in color, but I also want to capture it using my H-alpha narrowband filter because it really brings out the ionized hydrogen gas around the nebula. It's really beautiful. <laughs> then I will image the Orion Nebula as well with my dual band filter. All right, all right. You're on. Let's hope for some clear skies tonight. guys, it's super cold out here in the Netherlands, but I'm super happy as well because both the rotator and the electronic autofocuser, they both work like a charm. And I'm kind of amazed because normally when I test out the equipment on the very first night, something needs to be changed or something doesn't work, but uh, yeah, not tonight. So I'm praying it stays that way. And I'm finishing up a project right now. I'm capturing the Orion Nebula uh, using an H-alpha narrowband filter because last week I captured the Orion Nebula in broadband. You might have seen uh, my review on the ASI 2600 MC Air. Uh, so tonight I'm capturing it in narrowband and I will combine the two images to hopefully create an even better picture of the, of the Nebula. And I also put up the Seastar S30, that little smart telescope, uh, because amazingly it has about the same field of view as the advanced astrophotography setup I'm using right now. So anyway, let's see what happens. I will go back inside because it's very cold. 